And hello everyone, my name is Daniel Martins and thank you for joining us today as we take part in watching MISO's Breaking Limits. I'm joined today by Team ATG, Gregor Winter and David. Uh, say hello guys. Hello everybody, what's up? Hello, hello everyone, Gregor. good to be here. Awesome, fantastic guys. So today we are in for a treat, aren't we today guys? Yeah, we hopefully are going to see some big, big numbers here. Miso is in top shape. We talked to him earlier, and um, it looks like he's on track to hit some really big numbers. So we know that he's looking to snatch somewhere in the 180 range and clean and jerk uh, in the 230 plus range, which, uh, while it wouldn't be an official world record, it would break what the current world record is. 231 by Tian Tao. Uh, and well, this is exciting because last year we saw Miso go up against Tian Tao at the Worlds. And it's been a strange year since then, but Miso is in shape. It has been. And can you explain why it is going to be just an unofficial world record? Because some people might wonder why it's not going to be official. So for an official world record would have to take place at an official IWF approved competition, international competition. You need uh, official international judges, all sorts of standards around that. And again, since we're in a COVID year, there haven't been any official competitions, as far as I'm aware, since the spring. Uh, but Miso's in shape. He's been training the whole year and he figured why not do some big weights uh, and lead into 2021 where hopefully we will start to see some more official competitions. Oh yeah, and Miso is ready to take 70 kilos, warming up. And the, for the competition format, we should add that he will follow a yeah, competition style for this. So it's not gonna be just a random max out. He's gonna warm up for snatches, take his three attempts like he's doing now. And then we have a break, and then we have clean jerk warm up and three clean jerk attempts. Mm -hmm. So that's the plan for today. Yes, and so definitely we'll have a also opportunity to break in between those snatch and that clean and jerk about uh, 10 to 12 minutes, where we're actually going to get a chance to see uh, some presentation from Weightlifting House. I think they're actually that's in right. the, the the chat right now, sending us some history in the making. I think I see them saying. That's true, yeah. Hopefully some history in the making. Um, Mises' body weight right now, yesterday he told us he was around uh, 97, right? Yes, mm -hmm. 97 kilos. Yeah. It's also been interesting to hear about his training this past year. So we talked with him a little bit. And uh, again, this is a strange year. He was in Uzbekistan uh, and he was supposed to be there for one month. He said he was in good shape there and he ended up staying there for eight months due to the lockdown in Uzbekistan. It was apparently a problem getting out of Uzbekistan rather than a problem getting into Qatar. So he quarantined there, he took it easy. He said he tried 230 there, but there was no reason to push himself harder. And so he took it a little easier. But the last two months, he's been ramping up uh, in preparation for a heavy max out day like we'll see today. Yeah, he said he's been training pretty much every day, um, super focused and working towards this session today and a lot of you have probably seen that two weeks ago like 10 11 days ago he maxed out um clean jerks with 230 so it's looking on point 90 kilos Sorry, 95 yeah right. yeah Unless Dan, you might easy. see the callers better than I do from the front angle. Yeah, he def yeah, the callers, yeah. 
they're on. Yeah, so it's not. Yeah. Mizo is fun to watch in the warm up room because, uh, and Greg, you and I were talking about this a little earlier. He is calm and like remarkably focused. Uh, and I've seen footage of him in the warm up room in the past, and he just. There aren't many competitors who I think are that sort of narrowly focused on their task ahead. And I've even seen him shake a couple of his competitors because of how focused and intense he can be. He's breaking them mentally. Really? Notably, Tian Tao last year, uh, his coaches forced him to turn his chair away from Miso because he was getting into Tian Tao's head. So. Wow. Well, do you think Tian Tao's watching this right now? <laughs> 95 again. All right. And at this point, um, as from previous interviews, we know Miso has this whole warm up mapped out. They went through over different scenarios of what if this doesn't feel right, which way do we choose? So I'm guessing this is going just as planned right now. It's just 95 kilos and everything is on track. Yeah, and it's obviously nice that he can uh, control the flow of the competition here because it's only him lifting against himself. But mm -hmm. there still are those little things that come up. You might feel one way or the other. You might, I mean, athletes miss lifts during warm up, athletes miss attempts and whatnot. And as you said, Greg, he's trying to, their whole goal here is recreating as much as possible a competition uh, environment, essentially. That is true. And they've planned, they've been planning this like for a long time. Um, a lot of work went into preparation for this, not just for Miso, but also for his team, um, the live stream setup. Um, they are taking this very serious. And this is happening um, during a time of the year when there would have been the Qatar Cup, like Miso's home competition, which uh, is always important for him, like to represent his country. And last year we saw some huge clean and drug numbers, 228 last year. Mm -hmm. battling against Keanu Rostami, which was a great competition. And yeah, so the timing's perfect. I hope it goes and as planned. Get another attempt here from this warm up. Looks like 115 if he's got colors on or yes, 110. Colors on, out. yeah. We just an applause. <laughs> there is a little crowd in the gym. Yeah, there's and a big show of support. Yeah. Wanna so we might want to explain where this is taking place then. Can you say a few words about this? Uh, yeah, so uh, this is actually in uh, Miso's training hall uh, and part home as well too. Um, it's yeah. You would actually, it would be technically considered the living room, um, but it's going to be completely <laughs> fitted out. Um, multiple platforms and we got a lot of support from everybody here locally that's out here to show them some support uh for this tremendous day yeah and they just read it the whole gym put new floors and painted walls and it's looking really nice yeah Misho, miso is just living upstairs convenient for daily training you sort of wake Not up a bad home down. gym set up yeah right exactly he he was prepared for quarantine Oh, yeah. Once he got back from Uzbekistan, he was ready. Yeah. This is the home gym we all wish we could have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, and usually when... there's quite a few people training there, like um, friends, um, like hammer throws, like Ashraf is training there. Oh, Greg, you have train you trained there. there. You've been in I've done a curl uh, or two this there. location. <laughs> you, That's what, true. I've stayed with me, so I'm sorry. Um, I stayed with Miso there in 2018 and visited in 2019 again. And yeah, I think I did like some curls and watched some heavy lifting. <laughs> All right. What do we have on the bar? 115, 115 again. again. Mm -hmm. Mm
Yeah, so currently Miso is actually in the warm-up area of the lift, so when it comes actually time to hit his main three lifts, he will be actually moving over to another area where we got multiple actually camera angles, um, so it'd be actually better chance to s sort of see and uh, understand the lifts and all. Yeah, and you just saw 135 going on mm -hmm. for his next attempt. Very nice. Should we talk about some of Miso's PRs and um, career bests so far? Yeah, let's. Uh, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, right? He's done big weights recently. It was what one eighty-three snatch, and then one eighty from the blocks. Um, yeah, and then two thirty clean and jerk. Exactly. Yeah. So he's in and earlier shape. he told us some of his other training PRs. I don't know. Um, what do we have here? We have yeah. Recently he did like a one uh, sorry a two ninety five back squat. His PR was like three oh one I think. And can you go into detail why he didn't push it that hard? So he did two ninety five like you said PR three oh one. He also tried he did two fifty front squat tried two seventy for a PR but missed it and mm -hmm. said basically he didn't need it and so there was no need to push more. Um, also had a little knee problem a couple of months ago That's and right. felt they didn't need to push squats more than what they had done. And uh, I mean, you know, Miso is a top athlete, right? I think here's one of the small details you see that separates somebody who's intelligent about their training and approach versus us, let's say. Uh, mm -hmm. He knows he doesn't need more than a 250 front squat, right? Or 295 back squat. He's strong enough. There's no need to feed his ego and do more. And so he stopped there and obviously it's paid off because he, from all indications, is feeling good and healthy. All right. One, excuse yeah. me. Yeah. 135 on the bar right now. He has one of the most satisfying snatches to watch, I think, in all of sport. That second pull and the explosion and move overhead is just so dynamic. Yeah, and from past interviews, he said, like, during this warm-up now, he's not feeling any pain. Everything is just going, going, going. Um, his body is ready. His mind is ready. Mises is also a very strong competitor in the head, like, He's very much, um, like, how do you say it? Can you help me out? Uh... Focused, determined. Uh, he's very intense. Yeah. No, he's, yeah. I mean, you have to be, right? At his level, if you're going to be as successful as he had, as he's been. So, uh, you know, meddling internationally numerous times. He's had a junior world record. He's been junior world champion. Like, if you're not on top of your mental game, it's going to be very hard to succeed. But I think you're right in that even more so than some other competitors, he's on top of that game. Hmm. Dan, what's it like seen... in the room with him? Uh, I mean, the guy's the most humble, humble sort of character you can kind of interact with um, in the weightlifting setting. Definitely um, at the competition and events, it's a whole different beast, a whole different animal. Um, yeah. Have you trained with him in the in his living room? Um, in the old setup, there was a an old place uh, we used to lift at. Uh, now this okay. is quite upgraded. Now looks like he just put on his singlet, so I think we're getting serious now. Yeah, this is great. They really are approaching it like a competition. Uh, even their yeah. like the you know rest they're taking in between warm ups. It seems they're timing it out the way you might time it in a competition about two three minutes you take an attempt again they don't have to look to other competitors or anything like that but you can recreate the competition setting as, as much as possible if you're serious and holding yourself to a certain standard then from the side is it and the collar just the collar she's got 145 no, in the bar right now really so satisfying to watch him lift all right 
and then maybe we can talk about some other PRs he's recently hit. In the max out session where he clean jerked 230 two weeks ago, he also did a PR in the power clean 205. And I think his previous was like 200. And he also did a 180 push press PR. So three PRs in one session. Also not bad. So he's in good shape. You could say that, yeah. We talked a little bit uh, about his programming with him the other day. And so his father writes his programming. And it's interesting because during the year, and you'll see this on occasion, you mentioned this too, Greg, uh, it's pretty varied. Lots of accessory work, keeps things interesting, um, wants to avoid boredom and fatigue. And then as it gets a little closer to a meet, and as we've mentioned, he's treating this like a meet, it gets more specific. So focusing just on the, the classic lifts. And this week, it was still um, training, I think, just about every day. Took Saturday as a very light day, kind of off to recover. I might have not even touched the bar. And, and then, obviously, today is, is the competition day. And apparently, he even goes to a CrossFit gym on occasion just to change it up. Yeah, to have some fun. Yeah. Yeah, he said the other day it was a pretty rough experience, but he definitely enjoyed that. We're coming up on his actual <laughs> first attempt here. So 175 kilos on the bar. This is his heaviest opener. His previous highest opener was 174 kilos. Yeah. And we all know he can make it really interesting interesting with his natural or so fingers for this one. Let's go, Misa. Nice save. <laughs> Almost threw the bar into the wall behind him for a yeah. second there. But man, this is this is where that reserve of strength that me so clearly has comes into play because you can see the bar just wanted to go a little bit back. And me so said, not today, 175. Not today. Holds on. And I imagine, yep, they're putting 180 kilos on the bar. We might see another. Ooh, 182. Ooh, right to 182. <laughs> 400 pounds. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. I mean, 175 is exciting, but 182 we get. So that was, yeah, again, his best opener. It's not an official competition or anything, but the stress of this sort of meet can be uh, similar to a real competition. So we had to come out and make that opener. There's a bunch of eyeballs on him right now. Yeah. And he said before, like, if there's something on the line, if a lot of people watching, he can really focus and pull it together. He even, he said he prefers it to like attempting weights he has done before, where he tends to do, uh, tends to get kind of lazy. Yeah. And misses, um, but yeah, I'm glad he held up for this one. Such a relief. And right now it's game time, like he can have fun now, I think. Yeah, so his best snatch on the platform is 178, right? So. Back in world. Yeah, and it was at 2019. That's right. Yep. It was so, four kilos above that. Yeah. Just a little over a year ago. And like I said, four kilos above that, we're at the 400 pound mark. And it's interesting. He looks ready. I mean, there is not, you know, I don't even, maybe a minute has passed, maybe a minute and a half, not a lot of time, but. Yeah. It's going to be interesting for the clean and jerks where he has to follow himself. Yeah. But he's a top athlete. He's also in a lot of shape, so in good shape. So That's true. And we also heard he's, like, he wants to take maybe the last, one of the last warm-ups on the comp platform, okay. open lighter in the clean jerks. We'll see how that, if that's still the plan or not. 
take a big breath. His dad is talking to him, keeping him calm. Because Misu wants to go. He wants to go and his dad really has to hold him back. <laughs> He's the reasonable one. This is a coach's job a lot of the time, is telling your athlete to sit down, to relax, to take it easy. Uh, and mm -hmm. also his father writes his programming. So you figure there's nobody in the room, aside from Miso right now, who knows uh, the programming and, and his training better than his father. Yeah. And also his brother. He's also helping mm -hmm. and coaching. And he's also a very good weightlifter on his own. Like He can still power clean 160, probably. Wow. Cold. Yeah, maybe not cold, but pretty we'll strong. Cold. Yep. <laughs> All right. 182 on the bar. Second attempt in the snatch. So this would be a competition PR. Slight technical stop to the competition. Yeah, just a slight delay in adjustment here. A little strategizing going on. What are we picking next for the third attempt? <laughs> are we going for 187? Yeah, yeah, so the current just... world records, sorry, so the current world records are 186 in the snatch. Sorb Murati was 2018, and Tian Tao 232, Tokyo Test Event in 2019. Uh, sorry, 231, so 232. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And this is just a kilo under Miso's best ever, which was 183 done just a couple weeks ago in, in training. He looks right. Okay. All right, Miso Asona, 182, second attempt. Power. Yeah, too much power. I mean, it, very similar to the opener, right? In that, yeah. uh, so aggressive through the hip and just a little bit behind. On the 175, held on to it. I think he's strong enough to hold on to even the 182, but maybe just a little bit too much swing there. We'll see what he does if he wants to come back and take this 182 again or if he's going to go up. But he's got a couple of minutes. He can relax. And he and his father and brother can make a decision. Mm -hmm. Right now, it looks like they're letting 182 stay on the ball. But that was close. That was, like you said, Greg, too much power. But he's got that third attempt. We can do it. It's a third attempt. And uh, I think. The sense going in is the, the main goal is looking for that clean and jerk world record weight, right? 232 or more. But obviously, yeah. getting a big snatch. I mean, he's already put a pretty big snatch on the board. Three kilos under his official best. And so now he's coming back. 182, third attempt for Miso. Oh. Ah. A 
Oh, close. Wow. Not a bad attempt there. Close as well, but still a little, a little too much power. Sort of swung it just a little bit. Ends up behind, but he's got that 175 going into the clean and jerk. That's going to be... Yeah. Making a slight adjustment. Ooh, wait. Putting on 183. I like that. Yes. <laughs> okay. I mean, when you're in your home living room, you kind of call your own rules, right? Absolutely. Well, and, and in... I don't know when they changed this rule, but in the 80s, certainly, maybe, I don't think into the 90s, uh, they used to allow fourth attempts as well if a competitor was taking a world record. It didn't count toward your official total, but mm -hmm. it would count as a world record. Uh, this is not a world record, but MISO is, as you said, when you're in your home living room, you can call the shots. And uh, this would equal Miso's personal record of 183, which he did just uh, a couple of weeks ago. That's right. And I wonder how much um, the little disruption after the first attempt um, took away some of his focus, maybe. Because it was a long, uh, longer than usual break in between. Yeah, it, it was, right? And... Uh, he definitely looked like he was coming out ready and then was forced to pause for a little while. So sometimes that can break an athlete's flow. Stepping into the kitchen, maybe yeah, taking a step out, get a Gatorade out of the mindset, fridge. Right? We could see the fridge right through that door right there. Yeah, we're not kidding when we say that that's actually his kitchen. Yeah. I mean, really, I have to imagine people watching this are, are thinking, this is perfect. This is like, how can I convince my family to let me do this to my living room right now? Like people are probably taking measurements, calling up Rogue, looking into turning their living rooms into a gym. All right. Miso coming out for another attempt. 183 kilos on the bar. Very close there as well. Got a little closer, yeah. Yeah, that was a better one. That was a better attempt than the 182. I don't know about you guys, but I could keep watching this. Like, just uh, listen, I would watch Miso Snatch all day. I mean, I'd watch him clean and jerk all day, too. But in the Snatch in particular, I don't know that anybody moves quite as explosively and dynamically as he does, especially as you get up to these heavier weight classes, right? Some of the smaller athletes were used to seeing that kind of speed and explosiveness. But up at these, you know, light heavyweights, Miso's category and above, it's rare to see something like that. Hmm. So for everybody tuning in just now, Miso snatched 175 on his opening attempt, then took 182 twice and missed 183 on the fourth attempt. And right now, I think it's time for a little break, a little 10, 15 minute break. Yeah, we're taking a bit of a interim mm -hmm. at the moment. And uh, hopefully we'll actually get a sort of video from the weightlifting house guys as well too. Cheers everyone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's Now's the time to get some coffee to fuel up some more popcorn. Yeah, because I'm hyped. Like, I'm really, really excited. I'm probably more excited than, than me so for this. <laughs> I mean, this is the first uh, competition that we've seen. Well, you and I were at the Roma Cup in January 2020, and that was the last one we were at together. That was the last big competition I saw. Uh, Dan, yeah. I don't know when the last time you saw an actual weightlifting competition happen was. Uh, well, the last one I managed to get to was the Qatar Cup actually in 2018. I was traveling okay. out for the 2019. It was my big chance to, to get to see Miso again. Uh, but the 2018 was an epic showing as well, too. I think, uh, Gregor, you were there as well, too. That was a great competition. Miso did a 2.25 for junior world record there. It was fantastic. Yeah, so it's been and a while it, for, for all of us to see some weightlifting competition. Oh, yeah. I cannot wait to travel again, guys. 
Might be it might be coming up, maybe maybe by the summer. Eh, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. Fingers okay. crossed. So yeah, I mean, you know, fingers crossed for Tokyo, right? And this is basically this so today for me, so right? You mentioned this is kind of a step on the on the plan toward Tokyo, right? He does today, it's a heavy competition. He's treating it like uh the Qatar Cup were going on. Um, if it weren't a pandemic world, he'll maybe take it easy for a little bit after this competition. And then the goal and the plan is in 2021 start you know move into tokyo preparation under the assumption that the games will be going on which i think we all hope assuming it's safe to do so and at first of course he has to take the like if it's happening the asian championships in april yeah which right now the continentals not looking that great but we'll see i hope it's going to happen um i hope that the athletes are not preparing for nothing so yeah yeah so it does seem a little soon. Um, I mean, we're you know we're getting vaccines rolled out right now. It seems a little soon, but fingers crossed that something happens. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I think the real big thing on the horizon for everybody is going to be: can we make sure we get to to Tokyo? Yeah, and so yeah. now we're actually going to get our um, video from Weightlifting House here here uh, in our intermission. All right. All right. <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Seb Ostrovich, aka the voice of the people from Weightlifting House, and I'm here just to talk a little bit about Mezzo Hasona. Now, I think the first time I really ever took notice of Mezzo was probably the 2016 Olympic Games. It was an 85 kilo weight class, which is not the weight class he's, he's in anymore, and it was incredibly competitive as a session. And to be honest, Mezzo wasn't really fighting for a decent placement, and yet I still took notice of him, and I think a lot of other people did. He only just broke the 200 kilo clean and jerk barrier, which today is, you know, sort of thing that he would power clean and jerk. But the way he did it, this 203, you could just see the enthusiasm and excitement in the way that he lifted, in the way that he looked at the audience and the crowd. And so though he wasn't really battling for the top spot, I think from that moment onwards, everybody was really aware of this guy, this kid at the time, Mezzo Hassona. I think compared to a lot of the other weightlifters in the world, who tend to be slightly more guarded with their own emotions. They don't want to let too much out. Mezzo is an open book, and you can tell that. And all the interviews I've done with him, all of the videos and the time I've spent with him, you're able to see how he feels just by looking at him. He, he's not afraid to show you how excited he is after he makes a lift or how excited he is before he makes a lift. And I think that is one of the reasons that really makes him stand apart from the rest of the crowd. Now, 2017 really was the year everybody started to take notice of Mezzo for more than just his smile and his attitude. At the World Championships, despite snatching and placing maybe 10th, because of a, an enormous clean and jerk, 220 kilos, he was able to medal in the total, and he got a bronze. In 2018, he maintained that level of the clean and jerk, but this year, his snatch improved, and by 2019 at the World Championships, Things had changed massively. He was way up there in the snatch, and of course he was way up there in the clean and jerk as well. With Sarab Muradi out of the picture, many people were left wondering who it was that was going to really push Tian Tao from China. And Mezzo Hosona stepped up in a way that nobody else had really ever done. He snatched 178 kilos, clean and jerk 224 kilos. He forced Tian Tao to take an enormous attempt in the clean and jerk. He managed to clean 230, a weight we had never seen him attempt uh, anything like in previous years. If Mezzo had competed as a 102, he would have won gold by four kilos. And I think really that is just testament to how incredibly competitive this 96 kilo weight class is. And the weight class is, is odd in a, in a way. It's extremely competitive. It's probably the most interesting category from, from the men's side at least. There are many unbelievably talented snatchers. I mean, there are a lot of guys in there snatching over 170, over 175, and a few of them now over 180. But on the clean and jerk front, there are only really two, as I mentioned before, who are able to put in the battle for the gold medal. It's Tian Tao, and it's Mezzo Hasona. In the snatches, I mean, we, we've got Tian Tao, we've got Anton Plesnoy, Jonathan Rivas, Bodhi Santavi, Rostami perhaps, Sarab Muradi, though he's not really in and amongst it anymore. And now, of course, there's Mezzo, and that's a big problem for everyone else. That's a huge concern. I think even in the past, Tian Tao was able to just 
hope, assume that he was going to outsnatch Mezzo Hasona, but it seems like things have changed. I spent a lot of time with Mezzo over the last year, and his snatch has gone up and up. In fact, it was this time, almost to the day last year, I was with Mezzo in Qatar, filming him as he snatched 180 kilos for a first time ever. And now, just a few weeks ago, he snatched 183, and he's competing again today, and I don't know what it is that he's done, but he's certainly capable of doing more than that 183. So where is Mezzo with regards to the world records in the snatch, clean jerk, and total? Well, the world records are 186, 231, 416. And these are held by Sarab Muradi, Tian Tao, and Sarab Muradi again. The most we've seen from Mezzo in an international competition, a competition that counts for the Olympic qualification procedure, is 404 kilos. It's slightly down, but it's way up on everyone else. It's only slightly below Tian Tao and Sarab Muradi. But the difference between Mezzo and those other guys is Mezzo is younger. His rate of improvement is is almost worryingly fast. Every single year he seems to out-total, out-total, out-total. And we haven't been able to see him compete in a big meet for the last year because of what's been going on in the world. And so today, this meet, this thing that is happening now is hopefully going to be the reason why or all these other athletes become truly scared of Mezzosono. This could be the opportunity of him to show that actually he is no longer second to Tian Tao. He is the top dog. He is the guy who other people have to try to beat. In fact, everybody will have to try to beat at the Olympic Games. So with regards to those world records, the 186 snatch world record, for example, we've seen Mezzo hit 178 internationally at a world championships and it looked pretty easy. A few weeks ago, he snatched 183 from the floor. That's just three kilos below. And he did even 185 from the blocks. And the clean and jerk is even more exciting, really. I mean, the world record is 231. In the Qatar Cup, a year ago, almost to the day, he hit 228 kilos, an all-time record for him. It beat the 2016 world record holder, Olympic champion from the 85-kilo class, Klinus Rustami. It was just, at the time, a couple of kilos below the world record. And it looked great. But in the last month, Mezzo has done 230 kilos. And he did it even quicker. In fact, on the Weightlifting House news show, when I talked about this lift, I put up Mezzo's 230. And then I put up Tian Tao's 231 world record. Just to compare, see if we could see anything interesting, any differences between these lifts. And the most interesting thing is that Mezzo makes it look better. He makes it look easier, the pull is quicker, he even stands it up faster, the clean is competed faster, the jerk is more sturdy, and Mezzo completes a lift so much quicker than Tian Tao is able to complete that lift. And I think that ultimately boils down to why this competition right now is so interesting. And that's because with the way that the Olympics is set up for this year, countries are only allowed to send four athletes from the men, four athletes from the women, to the Olympic Games. They can't just send as many people as technically qualify in the top eight of each weight category. And so what this means is that China might not send Tian Tao to the Olympics. They basically need to send the four men who they know are going to win gold. And I think if you'd have asked them a year, two years ago, will you send Tian Tao? They'd have said, of course, there's nobody who can beat him. Sarab Muradi doesn't seem likely to go. So who else is there? But now, after these two years, after two years of progress, suddenly there's Mezzo Hasona. And suddenly, Mezzo Hasona is the only guy in the world who can put a stop to Tian Tao's reign. And quite frankly, it, it really looks like he might do that. And so I think that actually, China might be too nervous to send Tian Tao to the Olympics. And I think this competition right now, this performance right now from Mezzo, could well be the deciding factor. We're going to see them collide again. We will see them in the 2021 Asian Championships in April, and I'll be there filming that too and commentating on that too. And that might be the last time we really see those guys together again for, for a long time. But if Mezzo does well enough today, that might be the reason why China says we can't risk it with Tian Tao. We can't guarantee the gold. He is, Mezzo has so in is too much of a liability for us as a country to send Tian Tao. There are easier gold medals out there. And I think what might surprise some people is that this is not what Mezzo wants. And we talk about it all the time, you know, did you see this lift from Tian? Or Seb, did you see this lift I just did? And we talk about it. Mezzo wants Tian Tao to go to the Olympics. He wants to beat Tian Tao. He doesn't want to win and there be an asterisk by his name. He doesn't want it to be that he wins and people think, well, 
If Tiantao was there, maybe things would be differently. So Mezzo has two options, really. One of them is out of his control. China sends Tiantao and he gets to beat him. He gets to prove that he is the best 96, that nobody can touch him. Or they don't send Tiantao, but Mezzo puts forward such an incredible total today or in April at the Asian Championships or indeed in Tokyo 2021. A total that no one would have been able to touch, a total that no one would predict that someone like Tiantao would be able to touch. I know that Mezzo has told me that, you know, he wants to do 190, 240. These are numbers for sure that no other weightlifter is likely to ever be able to touch again, perhaps, in this weight class. But I think if at any point before or at the Olympic Games, Mezzo can do something along the lines of 184 to 185 in the snatch, and 233, 234, maybe 235 in the clean and jerk, and put those lifts together, I don't think there will be any doubt in anyone's mind that Mezzo Hasona truly is the greatest weightlifter in the 96 kilo weight class. And that, I think, is why this is all so exciting. That is why Mezzo Hasona is the people's champion. He's the guy that people want to win. Not only does he train hard and he put up incredible lifts, he does it with a smile on his face. He does it in a way that other weightlifters just don't seem to do. And that is why I'll continue to interview him and I'll continue to film him and continue to spend time with him because there is something about him that perhaps is lacking in the weightlifting world. It really is this level of transparency that we see with Mezzo Hasona that makes him the people's favourite. Thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to Mezzo Hasona's new YouTube channel and don't forget to check out the Weightlifting House news show. All right, thank you guys. If you're just joining us again, my name is Daniel. We've got the ATG team right to my side, uh, Gregor and David joining us in uh, the Misos breaking his limits. So we just finished up our snatches attempts and Miso is actually prepping himself right now in the warm up area for his clean and jerk. Yeah, Miso right. opened he just, it. He just took Go the bar. On, so he has a little delay here between us. Um, Miso just um, took the bar, right? He didn't have any other jumps then? No, he's got his first uh, weight on the bar now, but before that he was just working with his empty bar. All right, so he buffer, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so we saw him snatch 175 on his opener. Took 182 a couple times, then 183, all very close, all missed behind. But Miso, uh, we've talked about this before, mentally is about as tough as they come. And so we'll see him come back from not a bad snatch session. I mean, 175 is heaviest opener ever, but we know he wanted a little bit more. He always wanted a little bit more. And now he's out with 70 kilos casual warm-up for the clean and jerk. Yeah. He moved pretty quickly through his snatch warm-up. So it was, I think, 70, 95, 15 for a couple, 35, 55, and that was it. Yeah, it was a big jump to the last, uh, to, the, to his opening attempt to 175. Yeah, 20, 20 kilo, kilo jump. <laughs> and as you, you know, can see, he changed his singlet, changed his, his shoes. Is it the same model shoes? I didn't even take note. Just should a be different... the Antas, yeah. She's still the Antas? Okay, just a different color. Yeah, yeah those are the world record-breaking Antas I hear. Yeah, we know he wants 230 plus here, and we know he's done 230 recently. His best official in competition is 228. Basically a year ago, exactly, right? At the 2019 Qatar Cup, he went. And th that was only a couple months after the World Championships. So again, 2019 Thailand World Championships does 178-224. Qatar Cup, a couple months later, 176-228. And he goes 213-223-228. Remember his 230 clean world? Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Like 110 going on. 110, 150. No, 120 going on. And probably a color too. Nope, just a little one. Okay, 120 on the ball. So 70, 120. 
It'll be interesting to see his warm up plan here. Seventy one twenty. And then I would guess something like one fifty, but uh we'll see. Maybe one seventy even. Or maybe one seventy, yeah. Yeah. It's not gonna be that many warm up attempts for clean drugs because I mean he's warm. He's ready to go. Yeah, it's pretty typical, especially as the athletes get heavier, to see more warm-ups in the snatch compared to the clean and jerk. And uh, Miso didn't take a whole lot of warm-ups in the snatch. I mean, I think we saw on the stream fewer than 10 warm-ups in the snatch, maybe seven or so, uh, not counting the bar. And so on the clean and jerk, we might expect to see five or, or six at most, but I guess we'll see. So I'm seeing somebody ask in the chat why he might have missed those weights behind. Um, Miso might be able to speak to that better later, but it looked to me like it was just a little aggressive in the hips and it caused it to sort of swing out and then go behind. Miso's second pull and his explosiveness into the hip is second to none when it comes to these athletes. And the issue, I think, for someone like him is reining in that power in such a way that you don't over pull or hit it out and cause it to go behind. And his opener, you saw he sort of was a tiny bit off balance with the bar going back, but he managed to hold on as he got up to those 182s and the 183. Same thing happened. Just a few more kilos can mean the difference between a miss and a make, though. 120 on the bar now. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. as you'd expect. Dan, can you see what is on the competition platform? Like, what's his opening weight? Uh, let me take a look. There are two different mm -hmm. plates going on the bar right now. There we go. Okay. 40. Okay. 140, okay. So not that aggressive in the jumps. On the left, we see Hussein Satawi, his physi physio, who has been yeah. working on Miso already three times today, right after waking up, then around noon and then 30 minutes before competition starts he uh, loosens up me so massages um, stretches them out and they have this ritual before every competition mm -hmm. and he's treating it like a real competition we've mentioned this uh, there's some of the same pressure and nerves of a real competition obviously not the same without other competitors or officials but he did approach this like a competition and and you get a chance to see too then how many people are involved in this sort of activity right it's miso he has to do the weight he's got to do the lifting but his father his brother his physio all these people are part of the team that enables miso to be who he is and to perform on the platform without stress without worrying about am i in good condition am i worrying about my training it's so much more than just one athlete on the, the platform 140 on the bar now for miso And so looking over at the platform, uh, the main lifting platform, we have 200 kilos, looking like his opener. All right. So that's uh, what he told me yesterday, 200 as an opener, and then take some pretty big jumps. That's what he told us. And 160 is going on right now. Yeah, so it looks like then he'll just be at 20 kilo jumps from now on. So we saw 70, 120, 140, 160 now, I would imagine 180 and then 200 as an opener and then maybe right to 220. any bets on 
if 200 is going to be power or not. <laughs> well, you just said his best power clean was 205, right? Just recently, yeah. Recently. So he certainly could do a 200 power clean. That would be fun. Yeah. I guess we'll we'll see in a few minutes. A couple of his other best good. lifts recently. Sorry, I was just gonna want, want to say no. Go ahead. I was gonna say so. Yeah. So best lifts recently. We saw the one eighty uh, snatch recently. One eighty three. Excuse me. One eighty from the blocks. Two thirty clean and jerk. And he's squatted two ninety five and front squatted two fifty. That's right. Like chalking up for one sixty now. And if you're watching this, this is a good opportunity to remind you if you like the stream, if you like miso, thumb up the video. Consider subscribing because there's gonna be more cool miso content coming up in the future on this channel. One sixty. Looks pretty sharp, as you'd expect. Yep. Putting on 180. Mm -hmm. And if you're unfamiliar with miso, so if you've never watched miso before, it's worth noting because maybe, oh, I want to find out about him. First of all, shame on you if you have not watched him. Shame on you if you've never watched yeah, miso before. Really. But there might be some new people. But uh, so if you're looking into his competition history, it will be under Farez Ibrahim El Bak of Qatar, but he goes by Miso. And Greg, do you want to explain why he goes by Miso? Because Miso won't appear in any of his official competition results. So look up Farez, F A R E S. Um, yeah, he mentioned it when I interviewed him last year after the Qatar Cup. Miso doesn't really have like um, a real meaning to it, it's just a nickname. And you can say it, it means like a happy face. And it's just something that goes in the family. It it's, gets passed down to generations. So he mentioned that his grandfather was called Miso. They named his uncle Miso. And one day, if there's going to be another son or another cool kid with a good mindset, then um, they're going to call him Miso as well. So it's just a nickname for anybody wondering. Because I know I get this question a lot on ATG as well. I think it's safe to say Miso as a nickname fits Miso quite well. Happy face. That's true. Kind of joyful. I mean, even when he's intense in a competition, you can tell that he looks like he's having a good time and is uh, able to enjoy himself despite being serious. Yeah, and it's such an understatement for people who've never met him. Wait, let's watch this 180 first. 180, one of his last warm-up attempts, probably. Let's go. Say it. That jerk, right to lockout, absolutely beautiful. And every lift looks the same. Does his little yeah. look left to right when he's done. So there's not going to be any surprises here. Yeah, and I wanted to mention earlier um, that for those who've never met Misa before, he re it's not an understatement. He really is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. Um, he's so welcoming. He lets people come to stay at his house in Qatar to train with him. Um, I know many people have had like really good experiences with him. Um, yeah, just overall great guy. And I think that's why we do the live stream as well for him because he's just pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, I mean, there's a number of great athletes out there, but great athletes with great, welcoming, friendly personalities. There's a smaller yeah. subset of the number of great athletes. So it's nice to see someone like me. So uh, be, you know, being just a good guy overall. And Dan, you're out there with him right now, right? You're hanging out with him day to day, I imagine. Yeah, so I'm out here in Qatar and I actually met him five years ago at a uh, sort of an exp exhibition at a CrossFit event. He came out in his uh, Nike Air Maxes and jean shorts <laughs> while all the competitors at the event were struggling to lift over anything over 100 kilos uh, for their snatches. He comes out 
and uh, it's five years now, but I could have sworn maybe like a 140 with with ease. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about right. And he would have been a junior at that time. How old would he have been at that time? Like a yeah. teenager. Uh, 16, so I think. I met Miso the first time in 2016 at Junior Worlds in Tbilisi, Georgia. And yeah, he was one of the kids I remember coming up and he was just like, hey, nice to meet you. And he introduced himself. And I was like, wow, he's a really nice kid. And then <laughs> years later, yeah, no surprise. And then here we are doing a live stream for his uh, PR breaking attempt, essentially. Yeah. And Dan, are you staying out there with him at this uh, training slash house compound? Um, no, I'm. I mean, I'm here and present for the, the live event, but no, uh, I'm actually working at a, a gym facility here as well too. Okay, nice. Does Miso ever go to the gym? Just show up and <laughs> in his in his Nike Air Maxes still and just mess around with people um he goes to a couple of different gyms here locally uh it's a good sort of show to see an olympian throwing around and, and messing around in a crossfit gym mm -hmm. that's Does right he's he an olympian he 2016 olympics yeah. as a junior and does like he do getting ready CrossFit workouts sometimes oh here we go he's on his first attempt oh 200 kilos on the bar miso's first attempt Not surprising. Very nice. Yeah. So we go ahead. What were you going to say? I was wondering if Miso does any crossfit workouts when he shows up at these gyms, Dan. Uh, yeah, he's, he actually did a workout a few weeks ago. Um, so he put him put him on his back pretty pretty tough. <laughs> Two twenty on the bar right now, so he's continuing his twenty kilo jump progression at this point. And we saw the same thing in the snatch, which again to me is just nuts that he went one fifty five, one seventy five. I mean, as a percentage, it's not crazy, but it's still twenty kilos, fifty five, seven. Those are different worlds to me when I think about snatching weights. 200 220. So from our vantage point on the video, we can't see where he is right now. Dan, is he just sort of sitting in the kitchen, relaxing off in the wings? Yeah, he's trying to get his mindset uh, stepped out of the area because I think if you noticed in the snatches, he was still in the same area, in the same room, kind of yeah. between attempts. And now I think they're taking that sort of competition setting where they move to the back area kind of speak to the coach, get the mind ready for the next lift. Yep. Yeah, it can be nice to sort of step out. I mean, at a, at a world, at a competition, you have very distinct zones where you're warming up and where you're actually competing. And it can be nice to distinguish those as a means of, like you said, sort of getting your mind in the right place, getting set for the lift and just ignoring what's happening because even though there aren't other competitors there's a small group of people there there's the cameras and everything so being able to ignore that really, really nice. you can actually hear the applause right now of some of the people watching so here he is getting chalked up for 220 kilos I'm not sure that looked too different from the 200, if I'm totally honest. Well, I'm I think getting... we should call this one the last warm-up attempt. <laughs> yeah, well, I actually got from his brother saying that that last lift was not actually an attempt. It was still that 200 kilos was just yeah. a warm-up. So they were saying like that this below. was the, the first actual attempt. Oh, I like what I'm seeing. <laughs> I like what I'm seeing. 
two thirty so is going on. Yeah, two thirty going on the bar. Also, guys, do you remember when two twenty used to look heavy? That was one of his breakthrough moments at Worlds twenty seventeen, when he clean and jerk two twenty. Yeah, as a junior to take home like um, a bronze medal at he World Championships against yeah, Sorok. out in Anaheim uh, for yeah for a bronze. And by the way, two thirty two has just gone on the ball. Yeah. Yeah. On that one too, too. So now we are in world record territory. Again, this is unofficial. This is not an official international competition with uh, international judges and whatnot. But this would exceed the current world record in the 96 kilo category held by, uh, I would say, Tian's greatest opponent right now, the one who's the most serious threat, China's Tian Tao, who did 231 in July at the Tokyo Olympic test event, July 2019, of course. I guess the only question in terms of competitors is whether someone like Saurabh Marathi will be in shape for, for Tokyo. Yeah, it looks like he's ramp has been ramping up the weights again. Um, he posted some training stuff on Instagram. But yeah, he's been seriously hurt. But 232 is, we are well past the 500 pound mark at this point. And for me, so this would also be a PR. So this would be an unofficial world record. It would be a PR for me. So as well, we know he's done 230 recently. And Greg, you mentioned Miso's mindset is such that sometimes doing the same weight can be less exciting for him than going even heavier, where it gives you a little more incentive, right? Yeah. All right, Miso, 232 kilos on the bar for this attempt. He's got this. He knows he's got it. There's his father and coach. Also a great lifter in the past. Yeah. So that's his favorite part going up to that lift. Getting that slap. Nice. Yeah. Father and brother there. Both key parts of Team Miso. <laughs> well that was a yeah. lift <laughs> amazing he did not promise too much that was actually amazing that was really that was i gotta say one of the easiest 230 plus clean and jerks i have ever seen in training out of training any way you want to call it in competition Ooh. that was remarkable undoubtable undoubtable Taking the moment now wow. to appreciate the lift. <laughs> See, that's me for you. Snatches, eh, like survives, hangs on, and then clean and drugs start happening and you can just clean and drug a house. I don't know. Really, exactly. And I mean, there's the, the mindset of somebody who can be a champion, right? You know, a lot of people might get down, discouraged. You get beaten. Oh, I had a bad snatch day. That can infect the clean and jerk. No, Miso moves on. And did you see him totally walking up to the 232? Like, he did not look scared. He looked confident. He looked, he smiled. Um, yeah. That was how he had to approach a lift like that. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I think you're right, right? Right. Like, he walked up to the bar knowing he'd made that lift already. Yeah. He was already cruising through Doha, celebrating. Dan, seeing it in person, how was it? Uh, it was unbelievable. And I'm actually getting a, um, a side note from the team saying there might be another attempt if not more <laughs> no way they're doing, okay they're doing a, a photo for record at the moment but i've gotten a side side voice in my head saying there might be another one what kind of number is that voice saying <laughs> i want to hear those voices as well <laughs> yeah right we all want to hear these voices when i can't yeah, wait right. for the replays and slow motion 
Yeah, that 232. So, what are you really, watching? You got replays and slow moves later? Yeah. That's one of the more impressive, again, I mean, the weight is impressive, but the ease with which he did it. He wasn't kidding when he said he's in shape. And we mentioned earlier, you know, he front squatted 250 not long ago, tried 270 for a PR, but missed and held back because he wanted to go easy on the knee where he had a problem with a couple of months ago. And clearly he, his brother, his father, they're smart enough to know you don't need more to do a big lift like that. If he had the strength of the 250 and the 295 back squat, he was good. Clearly he was good for the 232. Certainly one of the best lifts we've seen this year, alongside <laughs> Lasha, like 222, probably. Yeah. yeah. Like apart from those, these are probably like the best lifts this year. Oh yeah, I, I would absolutely agree. Uh, and done, you know, training lifts are impressive, but done with some of the pressure of people watching, both in person and then a live stream. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little price money for miso on the line right now like for actually i might send him a few bucks just for doing that 232 that nicely i think you know the atg atg maybe we could send him a shirt or something yeah oh yeah i mean he has a bunch of them which is awesome um yeah that was the atg patreon <laughs> could send some bucks to me that uh, yeah. that was impressive. I agree, Greg. That's probably the most impressive among the most impressive I've seen in the past calendar year. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm struggling to think of anything else that was in the same league. I might be blanking on something right now, which if you put me on a spot on a live stream can happen. But um, yeah, that was the best, best thing. Dan, what's happening in the space right now? Uh, right now, they're still just sort of celebrating with the the whole team right now at the moment. Um, I'm imagining like there's like 50 people on the platform right now. <laughs> well, keeping to the to this proper social distancing, there's a few, just a oh, few. Oh. That... <laughs> They're celebrating, yeah. and then I guess we'll see if we see something more. And it'd be so it'd be great to see more, but uh, even just that 232, I'm pretty happy with that. I, I saw the, I mean, the yeah. cheeky smile and the nod from Miso when somebody's asking him about another one, but you know, you might have to follow. I mean, Miso wants to go, but I think his dad could uh, pull the plug here because let's not get injured. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his dad's clearly his dad, who has overseen his success for the past few years, is smart enough to know when to push, when to hold back, and when to you know when to call for a little more weight we'll see what he says but we do know that uh, he's been saving himself for this day so maybe he'll go for a little more but also that after today he will be taking it easy for a little bit in preparation for getting ready for tokyo 2020 which is in 2021 yeah. oh, dan's nodding getting a little okay so uh, i'm getting told that we're actually going to take a five minute break um, we're hoping okay. to actually get Miso for a post-lift interview. He might not be going for that bigger attempt. He might leave that, leave that uh, for another time. Smart, smart moves. Smart, I mean, live bigger. I mean, you know, if you're not happy with 232, I don't know what to tell you at this point. Yeah. It's a smart choice. <laughs>
All right, ladies and gentlemen, as you can see to my right, I've got Miso here after finishing his lifts. How do you feel? Oh, feel great. Feel great. Not so satisfied about the snatch, but like, uh, come on, what Rick with 232? Yeah, unbelievable. 232 on that clean and jerk, and yeah. I feel like there was still way more in that tank. Yeah, it felt smooth. really easy. It felt really easy, and uh, like after the snatch, I was like, you know, start to come down, start to like, you know, recognize the thing, and um, yeah, it was. It felt really easy. I think uh, I was about to, to talk to the coach and tell him like. Let me go like to 35 or something, but like that's that's good for today. Yeah, yeah, great. So, let us kind of get an idea leading up to today, um, as far as what your mind was throughout the day uh, leading into today. How do you kind of prep for it? So you know, as uh, as coronavirus happened and like the, everything looked down and uh, there there was no competition, so I didn't like to be far away from competing that long. So we discussed that with the coach like two months ago that we want to do like um, a better results, like new results for me before the end of this year so we can focus on something new for the, for the next year for the Asian and the Olympics. So um, uh, once we started today, the snatch, you know, my mind was like a bit, you know, go on need to 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 focus a bit more um you know a lot of people the atmosphere i'm so high like in my mind i want like to go like 187 190 185 like a lot of things in my mind that i forgot to focus on what i'm really doing on on, on the lightweight um so i think that's that's the reason why i messed just like i was i was looking really up that i forgot what i'm doing at the moment but um yeah it, it, it was good felt really easy too like uh, despite that I missed it, it still felt really easy the last attempt I could catch it but it's just like you know like let it go we still yeah we still got more no problem uh yeah that's about the snatch once we came to the clean and jerk in my mind just like yeah that's my favorite it's go time it's yeah it's, time <laughs> it's miso time that's that's what I do uh yeah just go for it and it was unbelievable the the, the lift everything leading up to it looked amazing and perfect yeah um, tell us how the setting in here, f how it felt comparing to being at a, a meet or a competition. Do you feel there was more pressure here or in a meet? How does it feel being in here? Uh, I, I would tell you it's a, it's a bit different. Uh, like it's a bit different because when you're monk, the your competitors, the, like the other lifters, it's uh, it's um, more pressure. But I like it. It's like you know. Uh, there's something to push you on to go like uh, to to catch harder to to work harder to focus harder it's it's much better in in a real competition but now also to today we had you know some pressures because like here the family the friends like everyone we know the federations like everybody's looking up to us expecting us to do like something crazy <laughs> hey shut up <laughs> 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 uh, but um, yeah it uh, it's 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 totally different. I think uh, I would like uh, to be in a competition. Yeah, hopefully it's more soon. Pressure, yeah. yeah, hopefully very soon. And so leading into that, as far as looking towards uh, prep into next year, how do we feel? What next year kind of looks like? Obviously, a lot's dependent on how things are going with the rest of the world and and the pandemic. But as far as training, leading into that, we're taking um, some breaks, some period of rest, and then starting it again. Yeah. So now uh, we're taking about 10 days off, you know, to celebrate first of that. And then uh, we're starting from the beginning of the next year, preparing for the Asian. It's in April, the beginning of April. Um, but we have no pressure on us. Like, it's, it's not necessary for us. We already qualified to the Olympics. So, yeah. um, but I still, I still wor I want to work really hard because um, I, I hope, hopefully, I will be competing May Tian Tao. Yeah, no, so that's that's a comp that I want to be at. You know, yeah. that's that's the kind of competition I want to to do. Uh, so yeah, that's that's our first competition, and then uh, we're taking about five days off after it, and then building up again to to the Olympics. Our goal. Yeah. Yeah. So unbelievable. Um, I think we had near over 500 people tuning in, watching the live stream. Amazing. Unbelievable turnout. Uh, and of course, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe to Misa's new YouTube channel because a lot more content, a lot more stuff's coming out. Um, maybe not just weightlifting. Maybe give them a little piece of yeah. some other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but 
thank you for letting us be here, be a part of this. I mean, it was an amazing experience sitting a few meters away. Um, and thank I think the, the, the community of weightlifting and the fans back uh, around the world are so thankful for it. Thank you. Thank you to be here tonight. Thank you all guys to watching, uh, to watching us today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, you love it, and um, uh, stay tuned, stay, uh, stay with us. We have more to do. Uh, love you all, and uh, yeah, next Olympics we, we got we, we we got more stuff coming soon. We got more stuff coming soon. Thank you.